Hey guys and welcome back to a new video. In this video I will give you a full guide on nested navigation graphs in Jetpack Compose, what these are, how you can use them and why you should use them in which scenarios. Every Android developer should definitely know about this concept, so let's jump right into it. And the first thing you need to play around with this is, of course, the navigation dependency of Compose. So in your build.gradle app file, you need to add this line of code, and this is just for um, collecting state from a view model. So this is optional, but you can also add that. And to start right from the basics, let's go to main activity. And in here, what we want to do is we want to, first of all, set up our main navigation graph. The navigation graph in the end just defines different destinations, so different screens in our app, and from which screen we can go to which. That is at least how it previously worked with uh, Android when we used XML. When we use Compose, then we have the so-called routes, so it's very similar to just a URL, and now we can actually go from any screen to any screen at any time just using this route. So far, so good. You maybe already know this concept. The first thing we need is a so-called nav controller, which we get with remember nav controller. And with that, we just um, get access to something we can use to jump between different screens. And we now need to assign this nav controller to a nav host, which is our main nav graph, which defines all our screens. So we pass this here. And instead of this graph, we want to pass a start destination, which is just a route. So for example, the home screen or so. And then here we have a block of code where we can add our screens. And for this sample, I want to assume that we have some kind of calendar app with an online sync. So we have a feature where the user needs to log in to see their personal calendar entries. And then we have a main calendar feature. Now I want to teach you how I would structure the navigation graph for that. So usually if you're a little bit familiar with Navigation Compose, then we use these composable calls here to define a specific screen in our app. So for example, our login screen and then here we get a block where we can place any type of composable, like a text, but usually that is now your real screen. And you can, of course, put all your screens as such composable blocks in this outer nav host, and you will be able to navigate between these. But with this, we don't get the advantages of having nested navigation graphs. A nested navigation graph is basically, yeah, it is a subgraph of our big main navigation graph. So let's consider our auth feature in this app, for example. So the user might start on the login screen if they're not logged in. From there, we might have a button to go to the register screen and we might have a button um, for them to reset their password. So three screens that belong to this auth feature. And the thing is that we actually only want to navigate inside of this feature to these different screens. So in an app, you're usually not able to go to the forgot password screen from the main feature or so. It's usually just a little button in the login screen uh, and the same for registration. So the whole navigation for this feature happens inside of the feature and these screens. And only if the user successfully logs in, then you have one jump from the whole first kind of graph to the next graph, which is then the, the main graph where the user can see their calendar entries, maybe add added one and these kinds of things. And in the end, all these screens that belong to one feature can be put in a so-called nested navigation graph. And we can do this in Compose using navigation. And now every single navigation graph, every nested graph has on the one hand a start destination, just like this main nav graph. So here, this would be the screen that will show up first when we navigate to this whole graph. So every single nested navigation graph needs to have one start destination as well, which would be login here. And we need a route. So every single nested navigation graph needs to have a route because from this point on, we don't navigate to this login screen directly anymore, but to this whole graph, at least if we navigate to this from outside of this graph. So the route would be our feature, so auth, for example. And then we can also put in our composable blocks inside of this nested graph. So in here, we could also have two more. On the one hand, one for register and one for um, forgot password, for example. So we expect to get from the forgot password screen, maybe to the login screen, from the login screen to the registration screen and back. But once we leave this feature, this auth feature, which we can only leave by successfully logging in, then we don't want to have all these screens on our back stack anymore. And that is one big advantage of having such a nested navigation graph that we can pop the whole graph from our back stack. Another big advantage is that this nested navigation graph now has its own back stack entry, which is the reason why we can pop this whole graph from the back stack. 
backstack. And this means that we can also scope a view model to such a backstack entry. So we can scope a view model to this whole graph and not only to these specific screens anymore. So that way we can effectively share the same view model instance in a whole feature. And as soon as we pop the whole graph, the view model will also be cleared. And the way we can do this is we can create a little helper function Composable, this will extend a nav backstack entry, and we call this shared view model. And all this will need here is access to our nav controller, and it will return an instance of our view model. But since we want to be able to pass or to return any view model here, we need to make this a generic type T here. We need to specify this first of all, that we have this type T, and then inside, we first of all need to get access to the route of the current nested navigation graph we're in. So if we call this, for example, from the registration screen, so with this nav backstack entry we have here, then we need to retrieve the route of the parent navigation graph. So the parent navigation graph is this navigation graph we specified here, and then get that navigation graph's backstack entry. So first of all, val nav graph route, and we can get that using destination dot parent to refer to the parent which is now a nav graph as you can see and then saying that route if that's null we just return view model here which is the normal compose function which returns a view model of course if you're using dagger hilt then this would need to be hilt view model correspondingly um, but let's leave it like this and then with this nav graph route we can get access to the parent entry so the parent backstack entry which is a remember call. So when, oops, not that one, <laughs> um, import that. And whenever this backstack entry, we call this function on changes, we want to get the parent entry from our nav controller. So we get backstack entry, where we need to pass the route we want to get the backstack entry for, which is now the nav graph route we fetched before. And then with this parent entry, we can scope our view model to this exact entry, so to our navigation graph. So we can return view model, um, and here we pass our parent entry. Right now we could call this on any type here, so even on uh, things that aren't a view model, which is why we need to add this information here so that this T must inherit from view model. And I shouldn't call the constructor here. And then we get another little issue, um, which is simply that we need to make this T reified and inline this so that we have access to this type information here instead of this function. But now this is complete and we have a very convenient helper function to get access to a shared view model inside of a nested navigation graph. So if we go, for example, to our root, create a sample view model like this, make that inherit from view model, and we now want to share this between our whole auth feature, we can go inside of these screens and say about view model, is equal to it.shareViewModel and passing our nav controller. We need to specify that we want to have a sample view model, and that's it. And if we now put this in every of our screens inside of this nested navigation graph, all these will be the same view model instance, but as soon as we pop this nested navigation graph from the back stack, the view model and its state will be cleared, which is exactly what we also expect because when we um, clear this nested navigation graph from the back stack, so when we log in, for example, then we also don't need the, the shared state of this view model for the auth feature anymore. And the same way we could now go ahead and create more nested navigation graphs inside here, navigation, this time the start destination could, for example, be calendar overview. So when you just see all your calendar entries, the route of this would be the calendar feature. And then here you again have two composables, which are now part of uh, this calendar subgraph. So calendar overview. And then we can also have our calendar entry screen, for example, where we get more detailed information about a calendar entry. But there might still be use cases for a screen outside of a subgraph. And that is, for example, if we have a screen here, which might be an about screen, which should be reachable from, from any feature. You might get to an about screen from the calendar feature, but you might also have a little button that leads to the screen on the auth feature. So then you can also just put this inside of the main graph and you will still be able to navigate to that. And last but not least, I want to show you how you can now navigate from one graph to another 
and how you can also make sure that the previous graph is not contained on the backlog anymore. So if you log in successfully, then you don't want to be able to go back to the login screen or any of the auth related screens. So let's say on login, we have a button. And when we click this button, we want to navigate to the calendar overview screen. So what we can do is we can say navcontroller.navigate and the route we want to navigate to is calendar overview. No, we don't want to navigate to that. We want to navigate to calendar because that is the route of our uh, next nested navigation graph. And since that has the start destination of calendar overview, that will be the screen where we will get to. So whenever you actually navigate from one feature to another, you just navigate to the nested navigation graph instead. So instead of the specific screen route you want to get to. However, with this, we didn't pop the previous, so the auth graph yet from the back stack. We can do this by adding a lambda in here and saying pop up to and we specify the route until we want to pop this from the back stack. This would be our auth graph here. And we want to set inclusive to true so that also this route will be popped from the back stack. So that means no matter how much you navigate it within this graph, as soon as you log in, all this graph will be popped from the back stack. So you don't really need to find out how many screens of the auth feature are on your back stack, how many need to, uh, do you need to pop and these kinds of things. So I really recommend to start using such nested navigation graphs if you have a set of screens that belong together and where these are usually not reachable directly from other screens except for the start destination of that, then that makes total sense. And it's also very easy to share a view model in such a nested navigation graph. So if you enjoyed that, then you will definitely also enjoy my more advanced Android premium courses, which will prepare you for the industry as an Android developer. So if that sounds good to you. Click the first link in this video's description, check these out, and I will wish you an amazing rest of the week and see you back in the next video. Bye bye.